All right, guys, some of you have seen the video where I field test this unit in the most mosquito infested swamp in the entire northern Scandinavian region. And maybe you went and bought one as well. Uh, I think you've probably been very pleased with its performance, but you've probably been struck by the fact that the cartridges that you need to refill this unit are very expensive. And a cartridge like this will cost you with tablets about 12 euros or 12 dollars, while this entire unit cost you 35 euros. Now, the question is, can you refill these ones? And yes, you can. And today I will show you how you remove this piece of nozzle here so that you can refill these ones on your own. And then you will have the entire cartridge refilled at a substantially lower cost than 12 euros. So to be a little bit more precise, this canister contains 393 milliliters of butane gas. One of these ones contains 21 milliliters of butane gas. So 2400. Every bottle will give you 20 refills and you can buy four bottles for the same price as one of these refill packages. That is total 80 refills you get from what I'm going to show you today for the same price as you pay for one bottle. So to be able to refill this unit here, you need to get this one way nozzle out of the picture. And once you've removed this piece, which I've already done on this one, then you will have another additional one way valve sitting down in the canister here. This one we also need to remove and I will show you how to do it. This one we will discard and we will replace this one into the bottle here so that we can refill this unit. So to do this, all you need is a piece of pincers, a correctly dimensioned Phillips head screw or wood as you can see here. This one has a little bit of steeper threads than you have for a normal metal screw. So I will take these pieces and place them over here and I will start over with a completely empty bottle. Here you can see the fill level of a new bottle and I will start removing these pieces so that you can see how it's being done. This is an extremely simple operation. You need a pincers like this because you don't want to harm the seal that you have over here. This o-ring is very important to seal your canister inside your thermocell unit. But all you need to do is to get a firm grip around the brass like this and then put some pressure on the pincer. Once you've done that, you just grab on with your hand and you twist. And you can see it's very, very easy to do this. Now, the nozzle there, or the valve, is not screwed in. It's actually sitting as compressed inside. So now, once you have loosened it a bit, you need to push out with your fingers against the pincers. And you can see here now how it's coming along when I'm pushing against the pincers. And that's it. You see how smooth and easy that was. That wasn't complicated at all. So now this surface that you have over here, you need to be very careful with that not to scratch it because then your refill canisters may start leaking in the future. So this is a first step. Now we have the second step, which is to remove the one way valve, which you have in there. And of course, equally important as not to scratch the surface of the 
valve, you don't want to scratch the surface of the plastics, which is facing the valve. And you can see that surface over there. We'll zoom in on it. And there you have it. To get this one out, this is when you need your Phillips head wood screw. And the Phillips head wood screw goes into the center of the little aluminum valve there without touching the plastic. So you need to find a screw which is significantly thinner than the width of this hole. And the width of this hole is exactly five millimeter. And this screw has a dimension of 3.5 millimeter. Now, all you need to do is to maintain the screw centered if you've picked a too thick screw you're going to have difficult to get a good grip inside here so the 3.5 millimeter is excellent for this job it immediately grips here you want to make sure that you are centered at all times so that you don't destroy the walls here in plastic and all i need to do is to screw it in completely so that I have a firm grip. Now I can take the same pincers as I used before and I grab on firmly to the screw holding the canister like this and pushing with my thumb against the pincer. If you wobble it a little bit you can see now how it is releasing. And there it came. Now, this has been perfectly removed. And you have your canister here. Now we take our valve, we put it back into the canister, and we place it, we push it against the surface. You will then hear a small click. The valve is repositioned back into its original place. If you wonder how far in you should push it, you can compare it with another canister. This one is pushed all the way in identically as the non-modified one. Very easy as you can see. And now I have three canisters that can be refilled. Now, for these sort of canisters, they typically come with different nozzles. And in this case, they're sitting in the lid. So now you need to remove one of these nozzles and see how it fits with your valve. And I will demonstrate here to you that the valve in itself is a little ball sitting inside this brass unit and it flexes. So if I push, like this, I can feel that it flexes back when I, after I release the pressure and I pushed it in. Now, the way to do this is to hold the canister on an angle, tilt it a bit, put the nozzle in place, and then push the gas into your refill canister. And here you can see that I've now refilled the canister halfway up almost. And to know how much you should fill it, you can look at a new canister, like the one I have here to the left, and it's filled up to almost 80%. The extra space you have above your butane gas liquid is for safety, so that it can compensate for temperature variations expand a little bit inside the bottom. And that's it. Now we refilled the entire canister to the same level as the new canister we had on the right hand side. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.